in order to get there, we've invited one of your classmates, um, one of your colleagues, a graduating fellow, class speaker, and a screenwriter. Um, please welcome Lechi Vanessa Kong. Good morning, everyone. Can't, can't believe this is happening. We're finally graduating. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Gaston, for pronouncing my name right, or at least trying to. <laughs> it, uh, it is a hard name to pronounce for non-native speakers. That's why in the US, I go by Vanessa. And so Vanessa Cohen is not my real name, just like Dr. Jody Foster, whose real name is Alicia Christian Foster. I just, I couldn't resist it. This is probably the only chance I can put my name and Dr. Foster's in the same <laughs> sentence. I'm sorry, but not really. <laughs> I chose the name Vanessa when I was 13 years old and was madly in love with Johnny Depp, whose wife at the time was Vanessa Parati. <laughs> Who would have thought that 15 years later, I'm here in Hollywood and Mr. Depp would be entrenched in his very serious rock and roll career and has divorced twice which means I have a chance now. And he doesn't have to change that Vanessa forever tattoo. <laughs> it is a great honor to give this speech, an honor that I don't think I fully deserve, even though this is technically a Chinese theater and I am Chinese. <laughs> Part of the reason why I'm standing here is because I received massive assistance from my Chinese fellows. That's 20% of AFI population right there. <laughs> Pretty much the same percentage of Chinese people in the world. Take my word for it, I'm Chinese, I'm good at math. <laughs> it is true, we are taking over everything. One film school at a time. <laughs> Jokes aside, Class of 2018 is a celebration of diversity. We are from all over the world, from Norway to South Africa, from the Philippines to Israel, to some of the most exotic places in the world, Moldova, whatever that is. <laughs> Georgia, the country, not the state, right, Michael? <laughs> and a place as far as San Fernando Valley. Did I say that right, Mr. Sadaka? My pathetic knowledge of world geography and culture can barely make up for my ignorance. I remember when I first arrived at AFI two years ago, I was so in awe of everyone, everything. The majestic building, these beautiful, talented people who were all way out of my league. I kept wondering if they made a mistake for admitting me in. Like they assume I can pay my tuition because I'm some sort of crazy rich Asian which is not the case. I mean, I'm crazy, all right, but I'm dead broke, just like my fellows. <laughs> so for a while in the first year, I was in constant social anxiety. I don't know how to make friends, and I would always like miss home and isolate. However, that situation changed immediately after we started our cycle one shoot. You know what transcends all linguistic and cultural barriers? Hunger and sleep deprivation. We barely have time for the most essential things in life after we started our cycle one. We didn't have coffee on campus and salads on food truck cost $80. It was super easy to make friends. Hey, I'm starving. Do you want to go out and grab some food? Sure, and then we're friends. <laughs> I suspect this is all a deliberate strategy of the administration, a tough love kind of deal. Because collaboration is held so high at AFI, and what is the most, um, most efficient way to, to force a bunch of ambitious, proud young artists to bond? Structured, discipline-specific, accredited torture. <laughs> it is good that we have a cafe on campus now, thanks to Mr. Glassing. Next step is to lobby for something with the Michelin star. But seriously, we have benefited immensely from the collaboration we've had for the past few years. And I'm so grateful for all my classmates. The searing agony of collaboration made us some sort of a family. 
Never in my life have I imagined I could be in an environment where we celebrate our differences and find our voices through the conservatory itself. Our obsessive compulsive producing family, our self-loving directing family, <laughs> our very sexy cinematography family, Ooh. our paint-speckled production design family, our pasty-faced editing family, <laughs> and my brilliant, beautiful, employable screenwriting family. One of the screenwriting rules I learned from my second year feature mentor, who shall remain nameless, Mr. Stan Turvin, <laughs> completely altered my view on life. He said, and I quote, there should be only one Stubb scene in a screenplay. A second Stubb only undermines the first. Now, for people who don't speak Yiddish, Stubb is slang for sex. And for the benefits of, of our Chinese parents, <laughs> I, told them, I told them that should means the activity we do for the first time after guests leave on our wedding night. <laughs> Ever since I heard it from Stan, I just couldn't get over how profound this rule is. I mean, think about it. A great Stubb scene in a script is a significant, life-changing moment only happens once just like our time here at AFI. It is so meaningful and delicate and perfect in its singularity. It should be ch cherished and harnessed. We've had these two years to find our voices, to build our craft, to experiment, to be crazy, to fail and cry, to lift each other back up, and ultimately to embrace our imperfections. So as we sit here, basking in the afterglow of our AFI stuff, like all good stuffs, we've done something right, we've done something embarrassingly wrong. <laughs> but now it is time for us, class of 2018, to get out there and show Hollywood how we, AFI fellows, stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>